Hey guys, it's Enamor, and today I'm going to walk you through my track Hypnotica, which came out on my debut EP this past Friday on what I play. So let's get started. So I think first it makes sense to start off with the atmosphere. Um, it's pretty prominent in this song. I tried to give it this outdoor, natural vibe. So you can hear there's a bird sample. You've got some rain. Very easy to find this kind of stuff online. You just want to get something high quality and make sure to EQ it to get all the junk out, as you can see. And I also like to use some compression just to even it out in case there's a very loud bird and then a little quiet bird. So then there's also this sort of melodic ambience. This was a pad from Omnisphere. I think I started off with some patch and then messed with the granular synthesis which is really powerful on Omnisphere and sort of gave it this movement between different notes and different octaves. And I think I bounce it to audio, it seems. Then we also have this hover noise. And it's pretty noticeable throughout the whole track. And this one is really cool because I actually made it with this guitar right here. Doesn't sound like a guitar, but that's because it's heavily processed. So I'll show you what it sounded like originally. It sounded like this. Yeah, just uh, like a hammer on, two notes, pretty simple. So I think the first step was to reverse it, which is already sounding a little cool. Then you add a filter that's moving around a lot. You can see the LFO here. Uh, that means the cutoff is moving up and down every three beats and the phase is set to 60 so there's actually two LFOs, one for the left channel and one for the right channel and they're 60 degrees out of phase so the cutoff of the left channel is actually different from the cutoff of the right channel and that gives it this great width and it's almost like a spinning effect as the LFOs move um, away from each other and back towards each other. Uh, you add some delay and some reverb, and this awesome Brigade Chorus plugin from UAD, which simulates an old guitar pedal, gives it some great tremolo, um, and just a great chorus in general. So you add up all that, and you get the ambience. So speaking of guitar, uh, this track actually used that guitar quite a bit, um, the, f the whole f first verse melody, that kind of sounds, it, it sort of sounds like a guitar, but it has like this almost vocal component to it. Um, that originally was just me sliding up and down notes in the scale. As you can see, nothing special. Uh, went through a similar processing chain of reverb, filter, some EQ, and that same Brigade Chorus. It's pretty cool there. Same with every chord you hear, like during the, the mini breaks, like right here. That's also a guitar. Uh, it's pretty obvious there, but then I also reversed it for the swoosh effects. So that was actually just me noodling around different guitar chords. Yeah, nothing special, but you add the processing, you reverse it, it can totally change the sound. Um, and then there's also a pretty dry guitar that was just this muted uh, strumming. Always love that sound. And I use Pan Man for most of my panning needs. Um, you just have so much more control over where it's going and you can modulate it for constant movement. Uh, what else do we got? Oh, so there's actually one more guitar part. During the breakdown, you barely hear it, but I have some really heavy strumming on a guitar that was run through like a heavy distortion amp simulation on the Apollo UAD. And I did a double take, so I recorded two separate takes 
process them differently and made one left and one right. So it's just super wide with no phasing issues. You barely hear it, but it's, it's there. It's making a difference. And that's a huge thing. Even if you're not able to record live instruments or live percussion, you can still take advantage of the, of the concept of double tracking. So if you want to make a clap super wide, instead of using like the same sample twice, I don't really know why you would do that, but if you took two similar sounding clap samples, panned one pretty hard left and one hard right, your brain is going to hear that as just one super wide clap. And when you condense it down to mono, there's not going to be any phase problems where it won't cancel it out or won't make it sound uh, thin or like flangey. Um, so you can use the concept of, of double tracking whether you're actually recording something or not. Sometimes even with a synth line, you can record, record it to audio twice and it'll sound slightly different depending on what synth you're using um, and if there's modulation and stuff like that. Um, but just by double tracking, it, uh, you can spread it out and not have problems when you convert to mono, which you always need to do. Always check in mono. Yeah, and then we have some standard effects. Um, when it comes to effects, I'm okay with using loops or samples from packs, but I try to either affect them with like phasers and filters to make them unique, or I just make my own effects from samples. So. Sometimes I'll take a, a loud percussion instrument, drench it in reverb and delay and get it really big and spacey and then bounce that to audio and reverse it. So you're getting this huge swoosh that sounds natural and it, and it resolves in like an actual sound that you're used to hearing like some percussion instrument. In this song I actually did it with a water droplet sample so I took like a loud water droplet from somewhere on the internet probably drench in a reverb delay and reverse it and you get this cool effect. And I think I also combined that with like a drum hit in a lot of reverb. So just making your own effects like that just adds a nice personal touch to it. And that this song has a lot of those in there. So there's also this drone and that was actually this JP08 right here. It's Roland's version of a Jupiter 08, part of their boutique series. It's like a mini version of it. I think with this, it was just both oscillators synced and I was just detuning one of them. So it was like constantly trying to match the pitch, but, but it wasn't the pitch. So it just gives this weird tense vibe that just creates, it just makes the entire track one big ball of anticipation. You're like constantly waiting for something to happen. It just keeps you on your feet. Um, just really works well in a club setting, especially when it does these crazy like pitch effects. Like that. Um, sub bass. So actually I made this an operator, which I don't always use, um, but it is a really powerful synth, even though it is uh, right out of the box stock for Ableton. I think the key when doing sub bass is to still get some saturation in there. And this R bass plugin is also just great for the low end, but the saturation allows it to come across in crappier speakers or like your iPhone speaker where it doesn't really reproduce sub frequencies, but you still want to be able to hear the bass. So that's what that's for. And I think I had a whole nother layer here, which was actually just a sample, but um, I saturated it and EQ'd it, so you're getting that mid-range of the bass line. So next we can go to the drums. So the most noticeable thing, just because it's running throughout the whole song, is this like gray loop. So this actually came from my modular synth, this one right here. And it... Um, didn't really sound like this before all the processing. Before the processing, it was pretty standard. Just like a saw wave just hitting on 16th notes. There was a lot of modulation going on, especially at certain parts. I think I was just uh, twisting the knobs and recording live. Like right here, for example. 
but it doesn't really sound like a drum. So by adding a lot of tape saturation and some compression and some EQ um, for this tape saturation, which I love using on all my tracks, um, I just cranked the high frequency so it sort of became more of a, a hi-hat in a way. And that sort of just gives the whole gro the, the groove to the song and it also has a lot of movement because it's constantly being modulated so it just sort of keeps you interested in the background of the song. We also have these bongos and I wouldn't normally talk about them but there's a cool technique that I use. Um, so you'll notice as it's playing down here, it's just randomly going through all these different samples. And what these are, I think it's referred to as round robin sampling. It's just different recordings of the same instrument from the same sample pack. So they're similar, but they're not identical. And by using Ableton's MIDI effect random right here, you're able to play the same note in MIDI throughout. You can see it's the same note, but every time it plays, it picks one of eight notes below it. That's what this does. So every time it's playing, it's actually randomly selecting a different sample. And that just keeps the pattern dynamic and it just keeps some movement throughout the track, keeps it interesting. And I do that a lot with uh, percussion. We also have this little shaker sound. This is actually just this little egg shaker right here. I like to record a lot of my own shakers, um, just have more control, it just sounds natural. You do have to do some heavy EQ on them, though, to make it sound good in a song. Uh, what else? The clap, pretty standard, just a couple layers. I do like to use Corpus, this plugin called Bright Snare, standard on Ableton, and it just adds some crispiness to the top end by like simulating an actual drum. So this is with it and without it. You can tell it's just a little added top end. Um, tambourines, this one as well. I used a bunch of different um, but similar sam uh, tambourine and finger cymbal samples, as you can hear. Just makes it so it's not this stagnant one sample over and over and over again. It's actually uh, something a little more special and, and different, and it just give, keeps it interesting, you know. Yeah, and that's pretty much the drums. As far as the processing goes on my bus, I always put some compression, light compression. Um, I use ozone for imaging. Yeah, I love the ozone imager. It's just great to add a little bit more width. Um, I think I try to control, tame some of the high end, probably from that modular sound that I just overdid it a little bit. And I also use parallel processing on my drums. I love routing the individual channels to a, a chorus. I use the Studio D from UAD. Um, there's another one, TAL, T-A-L, makes one that's free, that's good, but you just have to be careful that you're not getting this super chorusy like 70s effect. Um, you just want it to be just enough where you barely hear it, but it does add this width. But if you're like, if you're on headphones right now, you can definitely tell it's super wide. Um, there's also some parallel compression on the drum, or the kick and the clap and the hi-hat. And then I also use another one of my favorite plugins, Redopter. It's just this vintage tube distortion. It just absolutely destroys sounds. So I'll turn it up. You can hear it's just like super crunchy, really thick and you just really lightly mix that back in. I think I have it at like minus 20, yeah, minus 21. But it just sort of fills in the gaps and just makes it like a thicker drum. So this is with it and then it's at it. So yeah, you can barely tell it. So after the drums, I think that really just leaves the melody. Uh, the lead, the most important part. So what that was, uh, was just massive and a lot of processing. So you can see here, it's kind of like a square wave pulse width kind of patch. There's modulation on the pitch of each oscillator and that's just to sort of give it this like trippy wavy effect. Um, 
there's also modulation on both filters, and one of them is a bandpass. So the the general tone of the synth is changing. You can tell like sometimes it's deeper, sometimes it's more brittle, and that's mostly due to this. So it's a pretty weak sound without all the processing. Um, my go-to saturator, decapitator, the whole Sound Toys bundle is fantastic. I use it in everything. Um, you got the Neve EQ, Decimort, another great plugin from D16, the same people who make Redopter. Um, it's just a great bit crusher, and in this case, I'm using it for light fizz, as the preset says. Some EQ. Uh, I made a little effect rack for overdrive, and the only problem with Ableton's overdrive is that it doesn't have gain compensation, so as you overdrive the signal, it's just making it way too loud, so I have a utility. So as I change the dry wet of the overdrive, it also decreases the gain of the signal to sort of balance it out so you're just getting the distortion and you're not getting additional volume. So with all that, it's sounding a little better. Uh, but obviously it's the reverb and the delay that really sends it over. And then I also have it filtered um, in the breakdown and in the beginning of the track. What I like to do, like I said before, is use the LFO to just create movement in the filter and I mess with the phase to get it spinning a little bit around your head. So down here, you'll hear it's coming in and out of the filter a little more. Let's see. Yeah, as you can see, there's a ton of modulation. Yeah, so it's coming in and out a little bit, and then by the time it's here, it's And because there's so much modulation in Massive and just in the, in the plugins afterwards, I recorded and I bounced to audio a couple different takes, and then I just cut the best parts and glued them together, and that's kind of why it's different colors. So another big thing that I like to do is to vary the note lengths on the actual MIDI channel. So you'll see here that these notes aren't all the same length, and that's just to give it a little bit of groove, uh, because if they were all the same length, it'd be a little stagnant, um, and it wouldn't really sound natural. But by varying certain notes uh, and making them a little longer, you're getting more of the synth sound, which, depending on the modulation, actually changes the sound, and you're just giving it um, a bit more motion, and it's just a little groovier, and it just moves along better. Yeah, so that's pretty much the track, and I'm hoping to make some more in the studio videos, so definitely let me know if you liked this, uh, if it was helpful. Feel free to let me know if you hated it, and why. But I hope you guys have a chance to check out the EP. It came out on Friday. It's on Beatport as we speak. And I'll see you guys later.